Hello, I'm Michael Wilde, welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be going through the texturing process of these fish that I recently created. I'd modelled them previously in a video for ZBrush, the introduction to sculpting video that I've made, so you can check that out on my channel. So this is going to be me quickly texturing them. It's nothing too fancy, This, the texturing and look dev in total took about two days. It was just a quick thing, I just kind of wanted to get some textures on them. Here's another render of them under sea undersea, underwater. If you want to follow along to, with this, then I've actually made a Gumroad where you can get this model for free along with the ZBrush file. Um, and yeah, you can follow along and texture them better than me if you want. Um, and I've also got the previous model that I did for the organic creature cat course that I did up on there as well. So yeah, link for that is in the bio. So check it out if you want to give it a try yourself. And if you do, um, send me photos. I'd love to see what people get up to. Cool, so getting started. Um, this is gonna be a very quick video. Um, I've sped up my process by about five times just because I have recorded the entire process of texturing this asset and rather than go through node by node, you just realistically, that is gonna take hours. So I thought I'd just speed up, talk over bits and pieces and just give the general workflow. If you have any more specific questions, please leave those as comments below and I'll answer them. And if you wanna see it a bit slower, you can always change it in the YouTube settings. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna start talking over generally what I'm doing. Um, as I go. I've already recorded all of this and I'm just going to talk over it, explain my process. So to begin with, I imported the model into Mari as I would usually do. If you're new to nodes or anything like that, I've got a video on nodes, but um, I've just set up a shader. I've got my diffuse, I've got metallic, I've got my bump and normal, all that stuff in there. And I'm just going to start up by, first of all, importing my maps from ZBrush. I exported a normal map and a displacement so I can get those into the shader. And um, other things, I usually bake out a I mean, inclusion, sometimes a curvature of smoothness, um, just they can help with the actual texture process. So first of all, I'm just putting down a base color that I'm gonna use. I've got reference off screen, sometimes it'll flash up and I might overlay it in Premiere so that you can see what I'm looking at. I'm just trying to pick a good base color um, to start with. And then the first thing I'm gonna set up is the scales because I didn't actually export them displaced. I had previously created them inside a ZBrush, but I didn't like them. So I wanted to set them up with a triplanar projection. So here I've got a triplanar node and I've just put this scales texture into that node and I'm just setting it up so that it goes the right way across the fish. Just trying to set up the threshold on there so that I've got a nice edge and um, just see kind of how that works for this. So, I'm seeing at the top, it's not really blending well. I've got this weird smoothness. So what I've done is I've copied and pasted that triplanar node, and then I'm gonna merge the two together and using a mask, I can decide if I wanna use that top one or if I wanna use the side one. And then just by painting the mask, I've got a little bit more control and I can kind of pick and choose and then I don't get this weird blending. So you're gonna see me kind of do that now. I think it's easier to see it rather than me trying to explain it. So I make sure I've got symmetry on, which is a new feature in 4.5, I believe, or 4.6 just so that it does it on both sides of the mesh. So here now I'm painting on, it was a black paint node that I've put down there and I'm painting white for the mask to tell it where to use the second triplanar node. And then I'm just getting a nicer, cleaner blend between this two set of triplanar. So just by doing this, it means I don't have to go in and hand sculpt all of these, don't have to go in and hand paint all of these scales. And there are some areas that are a little bit rougher. Like here, I've got a little bit of, texture stretching just because the way the triplanar works it projects on three axes x y and z and areas that are curved don't pick up one or the other so you can get a bit of stretching so there are some areas like around here where the scales don't align up perfectly and that's just because of the way the triplanar works so if this were a model for production then i'd either take this into zbrush and hand sculpt all of the scales that would also give me a bit more variation or in mari then i would hand project individual ones and clean that up like that because this is just a quick two-day project then i i wouldn't I haven't gone into that amount of fidelity. So here I'm just setting up my shader. I've got the displacement and I've got that base orange color in the shader along with the normal map, just so I can see how everything's looking in the beginning. And I'm putting this displace scale on top of the ZBrush displacement. And I've got it inside of the bump map just so that Mari runs a bit quicker, the bump map slot of the shader. And I could just see how that's looking. And I'm just painting a mask now for where to merge these scales. Because if I just place them on top of everywhere, then I'd get scales on the fins, stuff like that. But I just want scales on the body. So I'm painting that mask now. So it just sits around the head. And I'm using quite a hard brush to begin with. And you'll see places in the bump where that does look a little bit weird between the transitions. So I do come back in a little bit later and I soften that up. Especially around the back of the head where in the reference there isn't as clean cut. To begin with, it gives me some odd renders. So I do come back and I adjust that. And 
And again, I've just gone back to that triplanar node and there was a bit, a few scales that weren't lining up. So I've just fixed those up by painting that mask a bit. So now I've got those scales down and the displacement from ZBrush, I'm going to head back to the base color because if it's an organic creature, I often start with the displacement first. Either I'll get it from a modeler and I'll create textures from that, um, or I'll create something myself. And now I just want to kind of get some base color in using those features. So I've got um, Pure F up on one screen, which is just a collection of all the goldfish images I'm using for reference. And I'm just going in and adding color variation where I'm seeing it on reference of goldfish. So how am I painting this color variation? If you have a look at my node graph, you'll see I've got a color node at the top and that's going over into the merge node. And then I've got a paint node for my mask, which is what I'm actually painting into using black and white as just the mask to tell it where this color goes. And the reason I do this is because it is non-destructive. If I wanna change that color, I can do so really easily by just changing that color node, but everything in that mask stays the same. This is really useful, especially when blocking out early on because if I want to make large changes, which sometimes I do when I'm at work or I'm working on an asset, then I can do that really easily without losing any of my work. Whereas if I were using projections or reference images at this early point, if I wanted to make any big changes, that'd be a lot more difficult. Again, I've got symmetry on most of the time that I'm doing this at the end. I think I go and break it up a little bit. So I've just added in kind of some of the, the darker reds in there. And now I'm just going in adding a bit of eye for, for reference so I can see that. Goldfish have this really guppy look on them. Maybe that's why they call them guppies sometimes. Um, so yeah, just adding in an iris color. This is kind of halfway between a speed sculpt, this object, because it was retopped with Z-Remesher and I'm using those UVs. So it's nothing too fancy. If I were to create this for actual production, then I would have separate IGO for sure. Um, I find that, especially later on, that the render I get, if I could have proper refraction, their eyes are really weird. There's like this weird subsurface it's like they've got this layer of skin on top but just doing that with a single piece of geo I'm, I'm just not able to achieve that super accurately so here i'm just adding some base colors for all the other sections of the eyes i'm kind of just airbrushing those together just getting something in for everything again a super quick process I'm, and i'm just using color nodes merging them on top and then i'm actually painting where all this color goes with a mask and then that way as you'll see later on if i want to change the colors i can do that really quickly and this final render has two variations and all I had to do was just copy and paste these nodes and output it as a separate texture. And I could just change the colors on some of this to get a completely different variation of this fish. And it, that took me about 20 minutes when everything was set up. So that was super handy doing it all like this. And I'm, I'm very much for procedural workflows. So I've gone in and I've added a, a plain color node for white now, as I've done with all the others. And I'm just going in, painting that where I'm seeing it in the reference. With this one, I actually changed brush, so I've got a bit more breakup, and I found that a bit nicer. So I'm actually gonna go back to some of the other layers and add a bit of breakup to them, just because it gives me a bit more variation and detail and doesn't look quite as soft and fake. So yeah, here now I'm just blotching it a little bit more, and then I'm going back to those original yellows and oranges that I'd already plopped on. And you'll see with this that I get to a level and then I send it I do a first pass of look dev and I found that really important, especially with this one, because the scales were so hard to nail down. I thought this was going to be a really easy asset, but the scales were the hardest things trying to get that metallic sheen. So this was a scales displacement bump that I got off Google. I just Googled scales and this came up um, and I used it as a base and then there was like a bit of a line going down it. So I've kind of gone in to Photoshop and fixed that up just by copying and pasting. And I do this quite a lot. Um, throughout this video is I take it into Photoshop. So here I'm just getting a black and white mask, trying to get those individual scales that I can use that in the color as well. And then um, if I was making this a substance, this would be a lot easier, but I decided to, because I'd taken the image off Google that to do it all in Photoshop. Um, if I was to do the whole thing again, I'd probably create scales from scratch, but here I'm just warping them a little bit, just to add a little bit of displacement using the, I think it was a zigzag filter in Photoshop, just so they didn't look completely uniform. It's really subtle, but it does just help it sell it. So now I'm just importing some substance bakes. So I've got like my curvature and thickness. The thickness was especially useful for getting the transparency on the fins. And you'll see that in a bit. So here I'm making an opacity for the fins. So at the very tip of the fins, they get weirdly like kind of translucent. So I needed to make a mask for that to add into the transmission slot in Arnold. 
So I needed the body to be all white and then towards the end of the fin, I wanted it to kind of fade out. Originally when I first started making this, I thought that the mask should be quite harsh and that it should go from pure white to pure black around the edge like you're seeing here. But then the more render tests I did, I found that I need to smooth it out. So this initial version, um, I paint most of the body white and then at the very tips I keep it black and I'm using the peaks and valleys map from ZBrush because then it helps keep the crevices of the fins that I've sculpted in which is in the reference where the fins are um, transparent it would keep them transparent as well so just using that information from ZBrush using that sculpt information helped inform my texturing which is often the case with organic assets and sometimes hard, hard surface assets as well So I've just baked that down and then I'm just going to blur it a little bit so that the render's a little bit softer between that transition. And now I'm just going in and that mask I made earlier of the scales that lines up with the scales, I'm just going to use that to inform some texture detail. So I've copied and pasted those triplanar nodes so that this mask is in exactly the same place, but it's just black and white data now. And then you'll see how I use that to add a tiled texture on just the scale portion. To begin with, it doesn't work, and I do a lot of passes on this, as you'll see. And that mask especially, I go in and hand paint and change quite a lot, just because this original shape that it's adding is quite ovular, and it doesn't really look like scales. But in these early tests, I'm just seeing how I can use that mask and the information that I've already got to save me a bit of texturing time. And a lot of this first pass is just me testing out procedural methods. I don't go in and hand paint stuff to a lot later on when I know what I need to go in and hand paint to break it up when it's looking quite simple. So here I'm just using that very same mask to set up a basic metallic mask. Pretty early on, I knew that I was probably gonna have to make a metallic mask for those scales because the way the light kind of hits them, they're iridescent and they, they do look metallic. So I knew I was gonna need to use that mask to inform where those highlights are gonna be. You can see here inside of Mari, I'm putting that into the shader to see how it reacts with the light. Obviously, it's not going to look exactly the same in the render, especially when I've got different lights and HDRIs in. Um, and now I'm just blurring that and I've multiplied a texture on top of those scales. Here I'm using the advanced settings of the merge node, which I've done a separate video on, and that's a super cool feature. Just so I can eat away at the edges of that mask a little bit and add a little bit of um, texture variation, but not everywhere. And now I'm just testing that. Um, I also placed down an Unreal shader just to see how it looks different from a principal BRDF, which is kind of the default that Mari uses. I find sometimes it um, it shows the specular highlights a bit more accurately, but for some reason it was also a bit darker. And now I'm just going into Maya and I'm doing a very first pass, just adding some lights and throwing in all the textures I've got so far just to see what is and isn't working. If I was at work, then I wouldn't be look deving and I'm not a look dever by any means, but you do need to know how your textures work with look dev and, and how they react with shaders when you're texturing to make sure you get the most accurate thing possible. Because I'm a look dever when I'm working inside of Maya, I'm not doing any adjustment inside the shader really. So I need to make sure that everything comes out of Mari fine. So this is a quick first pass. I've got a little bit of subsurface scattering in there, just seeing how that works because the skin of fish looks so gummy and, and kind of waxy. So that was gonna play heavily on the asset at render time. So I'm going back to Mari now and I'm just making a mask for the fins and the tail. The SSS was super strong on those sections compared to the body. So I thought that having a mask for that might be quite useful when it comes to just changing the weight of the SSS in different areas. But also it's a mask that I'm probably going to use on for a different number of nodes. So it's just useful to have. Go back into Photoshop and I wanted to get a mask for just the tips of the scales. I was noticing in reference that the tips were often different colors to the base of it. So trying to get that out was gonna be handy just to change coloration. You'll see soon this mask that I got by just changing the levels of it wasn't really successful. It was it had a weird shape, whereas I wanted to kind of curve around the, the entire perimeter of the scale. Whereas here I'm, I'm literally just getting the tips and the color variation to that section doesn't look natural. So I do go back into Photoshop and I have to hand paint that. If I was inside a substance, if I'd made this tile text inside a substance, then that would be a lot easier to control. So I'm just playing around with the metallic channel now, just changing, adding a levels and a bit of noise to that to see how it breaks up the flakes. Here I'm just making another mask for the eye. Mask is super important, especially if you're using a procedural workflow, which is why you often see me 
switching between the color and then black and white maps that I can use to mask off different areas to apply things like levels or tile textures or whatnot. So we're back with the metallic here and I've added the metallic to the eye as well. Looking at reference, they get the same kind of response that the scales does. So I thought trying to add that into the metallic channel might help. And I'm just trying to add a bit of variation to the color map. So I'm using a tile texture on top. I'm just testing some. So here I'm using skin, it looks weird. So I'm switching that up. Just pumping that tile texture through a level so that I'm getting only the really harsh highlights, just that I'm I'm not getting it everywhere. And then I'm using the add blend mode to add that on top. And then here I'm using a color burn with a kind of marbled vein, because I noticed that goldfish often you can see veins and that is probably a subsurface property, but just adding that into the color map meant that I could get that coming through. And again, I'm doing the same thing with a color burn on the eye just to bring out some of the vividness. They have these kind of weird spots and blotches on the eye, so I'm just trying to find a tile texture that kind of works with that. So as you can see here, this vein, it makes it look like cracked stone and it's way too strong. And I realized that as soon as I do my first test render with this. And I ended up hand painting those veins as well because you just can't get the same thing that you get in reference with procedural workflows. So it is kind of knowing when to use procedural, when to hand paint stuff. I'm just looking at some other reference. So koi fish are technically carp, they're the same as goldfish. So I was using those as reference too, just seeing how the patternation and the color variation on their heads and stuff work. And it's such, honestly, goldfish are such a weird and interesting texture. It, I found this a lot more challenging than I thought it was going to, especially at random time, because I'm not really a look dev artist. So now just using that mask that I created earlier, I'm trying to kind of adjust the levels of just those flakes just those scales to get a bit of the color burn in that I'm seeing in some of the reference. And again, not super successful just because of the weird roundness of that mask. So I'm gonna go back to Photoshop soon and paint tails to them a bit so they do look a bit more like scales rather than circles. And again, just exporting things to another test render. So I'm rendering those maps now and I can see that the transmission on the tips and the fins, the kind of opacity on that that I was painting earlier, definitely needs to be a lot softer because the transition on that just isn't matching reference, which is a lot smoother. One thing I've also noticed is that the original sculpt is just looking a bit too cartoony and a bit too like thick. Um, so I'm going back into ZBrush and just thinning it down a little bit more and giving the proportions a bit of a tweak. That's something I, I find myself quite guilty of is that I don't nail proportions on the first turn. So I do often have to tweak those a bit. Um, but yeah, the good thing about this is I could just take the base mesh in and just make a few adjustments. Also, I wanted to close the mouth because I hadn't done that yet. Just, it gives it a little bit of a less stupid look that the open mouth was kind of giving it. So I'm going back to the base color to those original blocks of color that I added in. I'm just adding a bit more variation to that to make it a bit more interesting. Using some of the brushes on the shelf just to make it a bit more patchy. And also I'm noticing that I'm seeing kind of metallic flakes and spec hits on the body in general. Again, not really a look dever. So to me, this would be a metallic map. If I was doing this at work, I'd probably do this as a separate mask and then look dev be able to do their thing. Um, but this did end up working quite well when I got a good lighting setup in the side of Arnold. Also the front of the head, that line was way too harsh. So I was just getting a weird pop-up in the displacement. So just by softening that off, I can get a bit of a nice transition, especially around that part. Around the side, it didn't matter so much because I've got the gills, which kind of works as a bit of a barrier. And because the fins and tail are so flat and thin, then I found that the displacement was pushing in too much. I'd scaled them down a lot just so that the when they turned transparent, they didn't look as thick. So the displacement, I just masked off a little bit in areas to help correct that. Going back to Photoshop now, and I'm just correcting that mask I was using earlier. Like I was saying, the flakes didn't really have a tail. I don't really know how to describe it, but they're just not locking in enough. So I've gone in and I've hand painted that. Yeah, it took a little while, but I think the results really did help. 
So that time was kind of worth spent it. And I'm just using the offset filter there to make sure that it tiled correctly. Um, if you want to know about making tile textures in Photoshop, then uh, that was one of the first videos I ever did. Now I'm just going back to that merge with that mask for the metallic map. And they should, the flakes should look a bit more shapely now and not quite as circular. And also that tail transmission map, just going in and I'm softening that up quite a lot so that the fall off from black to white isn't anywhere near as harsh. Time for another quick render. I wouldn't often render this much, but things like SSS and transmission are so dependent on render time that Mari's not going to be able to accurately represent them, which is why I'm popping between Mari and Arnold quite a lot. So I'm still not quite happy with the metallic map, and that was something that I adjust till the very end, and I'm just trying to get values that do work a little bit nicer. And those flakes that I added on top through a texture definitely help, so I'm just trying to balance that out with the flake, with the scales on the body. Again, another quick render, just checking out how the transmission works, how the metallic flakes are looking. So in the ref, I've got these areas, these kind of like streaks down the fins that are completely opaque. So I'm just painting in a separate layer and merging on top using an add blend mode to add those in onto the transmission or the opacity map that I've painted. And that really does help sell it in the final thing, I think. Steady stroke was super useful here. Um, you can see my hands getting a bit jittery, especially around the curves. So just using the steady stroke with the smoothing mode on really, really helped. And I'm also painting through. I'm using a through paint mode on the brush so that it's doing the underside at the same time and that way it matches up. And now I'm looking at how I can add hand painted variations. So I'm just adding a bit of color to the flakes and removing bits of white or adding bits of white in other places. In the reference, the flakes often are a lot lighter towards the start of them. Also adding some darker areas. This starts off quite rough and I go in quite harsh, but I end up softening up a lot of it. And real goldfish, it's quite hard to tell, but I think what you're actually seeing is kind of some translucent skin with a body underneath. And that just, I wasn't able to replicate that with just a single piece of mesh. So if this were a production asset, I think it would be handled and approached quite differently. But for this quick kind of texturing rendering practice with model look dev texture taking probably under three days in total, I think it, it kind of came out all right. Next up is the eye. Again, I've got ref up on my screen at all times, just so that I know that what I'm doing is what happens in real life. Because fish eyes look really odd. Don't know if you've ever looked at one properly. But yeah, they are like weirdly metallic and they've got all these kind of odd shapes and hues and fades and dots that you just wouldn't see in human eyes. Often I will be painting with projections and reference, but for this project, there just wasn't a lot of reference that I could think to use. So a lot of it is hand painted. So popping back to Photoshop now, and this is the final time I work on this mask. And I just didn't have a tips mask that I was happy with. So what I've gone in and done is I've painted black on top of it so that I'm getting a mask of just the edges of these scales. And that really, really helped. It took, it took quite a while, but you'll see here that when I smooth that out, I can get darker tips like I'm seeing in the reference. And um, it was annoying to hand paint it, but the results were worth it. I'm just going in, adding some veins, adding some scales into the diffuse. Usually this is information I'd kind of take into the roughness. This were a human or some sort of other animal, but just the way their skin works. And because it's underwater as well, it's very difficult to tell the specular response. So the spec roughness, I didn't actually play with a huge amount here. I ended up using a lot of the data from the metallic maps so that I got pings on the scales, but that was about it. This was a lot more of a difficult project than I thought it was gonna be when I first approached it, but I started, so I guess I had to finish. I'm just adding a bit of red now for a bit of a color pop. And this is one of the renders I'm getting now. 
So I always knew that I wanted to do two fish at render time, like in the final render. So I'm just posing the first one. I wanted to have them kind of curling around each other as if they're swimming underwater together. I'm just taking that base mesh and I'm posing it very quickly. I might add, not thinking about anatomy really, just making sure that the, the shape holds up. And then just placing the other one in. I know kind of the rough camera angle that I want to have the final render in. So I'm kind of mainly looking through that from that direction. Just correcting any mismatches I do with the move tool, mainly just using the move tool here and masks and then also the rotate function. And the S bend to form I found very valuable as well, just to get the initial kind of curve into them. Checking different materials to make sure the spec highlights are weird, um, aren't weird and I haven't deformed the object strangely. So now I'm just popping those both in side of Maya and I want a second variation for the second fish. So what I've done is I've copied and pasted all the nodes from the color channel. And be, like I was saying earlier, because it's all procedural, because I'm just using color nodes, then I can just change that and I can repaint the mask a little bit. And very quickly, I've got a second variation. So here's one of the references I was using. And I kind of like this white and orange blotchiness. I didn't want anything too different because I didn't want them to completely contrast, but I didn't want them to also look identical. So just gone in, I've changed the original orange tone as well changed the red, just made it a bit darker. And this was kind of repainting as little as I could so that I could get away with it still looking new. So I didn't really touch the face that much or any of the veins and stuff, I kind of kept that. And it was really just repainting the original base colors. Quite quickly as well, I might add probably 20, 30 minutes of painting max, but here you can see in the render how different they do look at the end. And then Maya crashed, of course. One of the good things about look deving as I go is I already had a pretty good idea of the look of the lighting and the look dev setup that I was going to use. So when I had the final textures and the final models, I could just kind of plonk those down and make final tweaks. I used a gobo through some lights to add a bit of caustic patination on top. And I also experimented with some atmosphere, which I think you might see in a second because I recorded some of that, which I didn't end up using because I ended up doing most of that in Nuke. Yeah, so here's playing with the atmosphere, just didn't love the results. And I thought I could do the same, if not better job inside of Nuke for a quicker render time. But it was fun to learn actually. So here's my Nuke render. So this is the final image I got out. And you would have seen the image at the start of this video, but D ZD Focus I found helped a lot. Maybe that's because it's hiding the textures, I don't know. Um, but this is the final thing, just with a little bit of grain and a few tweaks here and there. But yeah, for, for three days, I think it was all right. I think. There's a lot I could have done differently, and there's still a lot if I were to carry this on forward that I would change. I th I'm still not super happy with the flakes and the scales. I don't think they're super successful. I think they work for a single still image. Um, but as a final correct texture package, I don't think they're 100% accurate. So I would probably go back and look at that. And just around the face as well, the actual kind of detail on that, I would probably look at that a little bit more maybe project some real life ref or something. I'm, I'm not entirely sure how I would approach that, but for, for a super quick texturing job, I think it's all right. And um, yeah, like I said, you can download that model for free on Gumroad, the new Gumroad that I've created. So if you want to have a go at this yourself, if you want to make something better than me, then please feel free, go ahead. Um, send me some pictures of it if you do. I'd actually be really interested to see what people come up with. Um, yeah, thanks for watching this. It was a very, very quick video, but I didn't want to well on this for too long considering it was quite a quick project and just something to do during quarantine if you've got any questions feel free to leave them in the comment section my name is michael wilde as always i'm a vfx artist i've been working in vfx modeling and texturing for about seven years and i make youtube tutorials now in my spare time so if there's anything you'd like to see please leave that in the comment section you can head over to my website michaelwilde.co.uk for more about me otherwise take it easy have a great day and best of luck whatever you're doing in vfx whether that's modeling texturing or i don't know what else <laughs> Yeah, take it easy. Cheers.